Hey everyone, today I have a quick tutorial for you. We're gonna be showing you how to flash the BIOS on this Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi gaming motherboard that I picked up. Now this motherboard out of the box is not compatible with the Ryzen 5000 series chips. I have a Ryzen 7 5800X here that I'd like to use with this motherboard, but out of the box it's not compatible. So we do need to flash this motherboard with the Q Flash Plus that it has on it. It should be pretty easy to do. We're gonna show you step-by-step step how to do this. But hey, if you're new here, my name is Ken. This is Northern Viking Every Day, and we bring you videos on reviews and how-tos. So please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Let's go ahead and dive right into flashing this BIOS. So a couple quick things if you are interested in this motherboard or this CPU, I will have links below in the description to Amazon so you can check them out for yourself and find more information. But in order to flash this motherboard, we do need to have a USB flash drive and we need to set that up on the computer. So that's gonna be our first step before we jump over to the motherboard and actually flashing the BIOS. All right, so we're over here on the Gigabyte website. Make sure you found the correct motherboard that you're working with today. We're working with the X570 or a Elite Wi-Fi. I will put a link to this motherboard in the description below, but if you're working with a different motherboard, you can search for it under the products here and just make sure it is the correct one. Now, once you found the correct motherboard, what we're looking for in the top kind of right-hand area, you'll see an option here that says support. You can go ahead and click on support and a new page is gonna load up. And you'll see in this area here, it says BIOS for myself plus 11. We can go ahead and click on that and it's gonna bring up all the BIOS updates for you. Now, if you go up here to the top and you click on CPU support right here, you can actually see all the CPUs that are functional with this motherboard. So you can see the Ryzen 9 5000 series works here, the Ryzen 7 5000 series. But if you go all the way to the right hand side, it tells you which um, BIOS version you need to have for it to function. So for example, I have the Ryzen 7 5800X. We need to at least have version F30 for it to function with that chip. So we're gonna just go back to downloads here and we're gonna click on BIOS again and all the versions are gonna come up and you can read the description here on the right hand side. So I would need at least F30 right here, but I'm gonna go with the newest version which is F35 and the description's right there. We're just gonna go ahead and click download and download that version of the BIOS. So I've got that downloaded. It's only about 11 megabytes and I'm gonna go find that in my downloads folder. So I'll left click on my start menu, go up to my documents and we'll go to downloads here and it should be right there. It's a zip folder. So let's go ahead and extract those files. So I'll right click on the folder and you should see an option that says extract all. Just go ahead and left click on that. And I'm just gonna extract it right into my downloads. You can extract it to wherever you'd like. I'm just gonna extract it here and it should create another folder. I'll just show you right next to it that has all the files in it. So let's go ahead and open up that folder. And one important step is we wanna see the file extension. So we're gonna turn that on if you don't have it on already. If you go up to view here, and there's a little checkbox that says file name extensions. We wanna turn that on and all of a sudden you can see the file extensions for your different files. Now we need to go ahead and actually change the name of one of these files. And the one we need to change the name of is the bottom one here that says x570aew.f35. So that's the one we need to change the file name of. So if we right click on that, we can go to rename and we're just gonna delete this all of it here. And we're gonna type in the name gigabyte, G-I-G-A-B-Y-T-E dot B-I-N. So again, gigabyte dot bin, we'll hit enter. It says, if you change the file name extension, the file might not become usable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, we're gonna change it. And it actually moved it up one here in there. So I'm gonna just put this off to the side here for a moment. Next up, we actually need to open up our thumb drive and I've already inserted it in my computer there. So I'm gonna to go to my start menu, my documents, and I'll put this one off to the left here and maybe I'll put this one to the right, just like that. And we want to open up our, file, our thumb drive here. I've got Kodak USB G drive. Now, one important thing we need to do is make sure that this is a FAT32 formatted drive. So if I go to my drive here, Kodak USB, right click on it, 
and we go to format here, we can reformat that drive, make sure it is FAT32, and we'll just hit start here. And warning, warning, formatting will erase all the data. I'm okay with that. We'll just hit okay. And it's gonna format that drive for me. Format complete. And I'm just gonna close that. We'll open that drive right back up here again. We'll just move that off to the left. There we go. And we're just gonna copy this gigabyte.bin file over to the Kodak drive. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that over there just like that, it's gonna copy it over. And now we're ready to move this file over to the motherboard. Now I've gone ahead and installed the motherboard in my case for simplicity. I have seen some people flash the BIOS on top of the box that the motherboard came in, but you can see I haven't installed the CPU or the RAM. If you do have that installed, that's okay. You can do it with it installed or not installed. And the only two connectors you need to connect from the power supply are the eight pin ATX connector up here in the corner as well as the main 24 pin ATX connector here. I'll give you another view of the motherboard so you can see where these are located. So I've got my power supply installed and I got my power supply on. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my USB drive that has my gigabyte.bin file on it right into the white USB port that says BIOS. From there, go ahead and push the Q flash plus button located on the bottom edge of your motherboard. Here's a close up of what that button looks like. There's also a little LED indicator that'll start flashing once you push the button. Once you push that button, don't touch anything until that LED indicator goes out. For myself, this took about three to four minutes for the BIOS to update on my motherboard. I should also mention that during this update, the fan on my motherboard did start spinning and it turned off once the BIOS update was complete. So once that LED indicator stops flashing, you can go ahead and turn off your power supply, pull out your USB flash drive and your motherboard BIOS update is all complete. So I hope this video was able to help you flash your BIOS on your Gigabyte X570 Oros Elite Wi-Fi gaming motherboard. If it did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also remember to connect with me on social media. You will find all those links below in the description. Thank you so much for watching today. Until next time, take care.